Hi, and welcome to Twin Moons Tavern. Today we're doing a variation on the Italian classic pasta carbonara, and do it as more of an American-style mac and cheese. Pasta carbonara is a very classic Italian dish that makes a creamy sauce without using any cream. Carbonara is one of those dishes where there's really only one authentic way to make it, and quite frankly, here on YouTube, it's been done to death. Because of that, I'm combining the carbonara method with American mac and cheese to get a mac and cheese carbonara. First thing that you're going to need is guanciale. Now, guanciale is the cured jowl meat off of a pig, so it's kind of like a pancetta or bacon with a much higher fat ratio. If you can't get your hands on guanciale, which is pretty hard to find here in the States, you can substitute pancetta or even in a pinch bacon for it. Just know all the hardcore people are going to shame you about it, but I'm not going to. You do you. So what I have here is cured jowl meat. It's not specifically guanciale. It is the closest I was able to find. First thing I'm going to do is just carve off the skin. Get it into thick slices. And from there, I'm just going to go ahead and get them into small dice pieces. Once we've done that, we need to go ahead and prepare our cheese. Typically, carbonara is made with pecorino romano. Pecorino romano is a very sharp and a very salty cheese. And sometimes in a carbonara, it's paired with a parmesan. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to have half of our volume in pecorino and half in parmesan. Go ahead and grate all that up and have that ready. And then the last bit of prep we're going to do is to get together our egg slurry. We're just going to crack three eggs into our bowl and then one egg yolk to make it a little more rich. Add some black pepper to it, beat that up. And up to this point, we have been making a fairly authentic carbonara. Now that we have all our prep done, in a cold pan on a medium, medium low heat, put in your guanciale, pancetta, bacon, whatever have you, put that in. You want to start off with a cold pan and bring the temperature up slowly so your fat has time to render out before the meat browns. You want to get as much of that fat out as you can because that's going to be a really important component once you start making the sauce. Now about five to ten minutes before your guanciale is cooked, go ahead and start your pasta. And that's just a boiling pot full of salted water. You're going to go ahead and add your pasta. Now in a traditional carbonara, this is usually like a spaghetti or linguine or something like that. And this is where I really start to deviate from a traditional carbonara. I'm going to go ahead and use a rotini pasta. These swirls in it is really going to help catch as much sauce as possible and hold that in there to make every bite as cheesy and saucy as possible. And then just before the pasta is done, go ahead and turn off the pan with your guanciale in it and then just pull the pasta out and go directly into your saucepan. I'm using a strainer to make it easy. And if you notice, I'm not really letting any of the water leave. I'm carrying whatever water is coming over is coming over. And that starchy water is going to combine and emulsify with the fat in there as you're constantly stirring it. And that's going to really be the start of your sauce. Once you have your pasta in there and the water and the fat are starting to emulsify, at this point, you're going to go ahead and while you're stirring it, slowly pour in and keep on stirring that egg slurry. Now remember, your pan is off. So the only thing that's keeping this hot is the residual heat from the pan and the pasta water. Be sure to keep it moving. This gentle heat's going to cook the eggs, but it's going to do it without scrambling them. And that's just going to make the sauce thicker and richer. Add in some pepper, stir that in. Pepper is an important and often overlooked component to carbonara. So be sure to put in a bunch and just continue stirring everything together. Once that's all emulsified, go ahead and start adding your cheese. With the carbonara, you're not going to add as much as you're going to do with the mac and cheese, but I'm making mac and cheese. And as the cheese melts, just add some more in. Now, this is really where I go off the rails and make this into more of an American mac and cheese than I do a classic carbonara. Take that pasta with the sauce and the bits of guanciale, and I'm going to evenly distribute them in a couple of oven-safe bowls. Spread on top some breadcrumbs, some more shredded cheese, and now I'm just going to put them in, in the broiler for about four or five minutes. Take them out. Add some more guanciale on the top for garnish. A little bit more shredded cheese. Flip the tray around. Put it in for another couple of minutes. Just long enough for everything to get brown and beautiful. And there you have it. An American version of an Italian classic. 
Pasta carbonara. It's a classic Italian dish, um, uh, typically made with spaghetti, sometimes with like a linguine or something like that. That's perfectly fine. Um, it is very simple and straightforward. What we have here is not that. It is kind of a mashup between that classic dish and American mac and cheese. Um, Carbonara is, is, has a lot of tradition and the right way to make it wrapped up in it. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing that, I try, try to do a hybrid of those two different things. And um, it's a, uh, a, the sauce in it is made from eggs as opposed to like cream or something like that. So I took that technique and applied it to mac and cheese. And that's what we got.